Hello, hello, hello. Let's talk about parametric design. It's been a while, hasn't it? Well, up until now there were three main competitors. We had Dynamo by Revit, or for Revit. We had Grasshopper for Rhino, and we have uh, Houdini for Houdini. <laughs> And these three competitors basically share the space, right? You have uh, Dynamo that is mostly used just for architectural stuff uh, or engineering stuff. Then you have Grasshopper that's a much wider, has a much wider range and is uh, still used for anything that should be manufactured or produced in real world and then you have Houdini that is mostly used for special effects not to say that people don't use it for production right this is where a fourth one comes in B graphy so I've been working with people behind B graphy for uh, two years now maybe on and off uh, just kind of consulting and helping out with developing this online node editor because i feel like competition is good and it's nice to see innovation in the space and just uh, creating accessibility for you know for 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 the public because bgraphy is free to use and that is quite important in my opinion so without any further ado i i think i will just start uh creating uh parametric model and as I'm doing it I'm just going to kind of explain to you what it is uh, why you should check it out and in general just just show you the the ropes of it right so after creating a, an account I here I have my editor uh, tab or editor button on the website if I click it before we begin the tutorial or the overview I want to specify one important thing or two Kind of anchor down one important thing the program bgraphy is still under development and it's still in early stages of development meaning that it's gonna be full of bugs which i myself have encountered during the recording of this video as well as you will most likely encounter if you you know sign up and start start using the, the the software what you should do with them is definitely definitely tell the developers about them the way you can do it is through email or just kind of tagging bgraphy in your social media and just posting the bugs or uh, joining their discord there's multiple multiple ways right on how to reach out but the more you complain and the more <laughs> bugs you show the faster they can go through iterations of the software and the faster it becomes more and more stable right so make sure that you don't expect this to be a finished product this is still quite early okay that's enough that's enough of a disclaimer let's jump right into it there we go uh it opens up all of the models that um that I've made, right? And here I have my little trash bin, the testing ways, uh, VAS, uh, testing three and so on. I will just be creating a new model instead. So new model, and I'll just call it for YouTube. YouTube, for YouTube, hit save. Okay, once that is done, there we go, it loads in. Just give it a second. Okay, we are in. So, in terms of the user interface, I've, oh, by the way, I've, as you can see, I've changed my position and so on. But in terms of the user interface, uh, you have your viewport right here on the bottom, bottom right of the screen, and you can, of course, resize it to any, any size you want. Uh, then for the viewport, you have the controls very similar to um, those of Rhino or I guess any CAD CAD software, right? So mouse left click is rotate, mouse right click is pan, scroll wheel to zoom. Easy as that. Then you have two shading modes. You have the just the shaded view and the rendered or material preview. And you can change between perspective, top, right, blah, 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 right? If you lose some, some geometry, you know, if it's flies away but by 
fly away. I mean, if you type in a ridiculous number for the coordinates, then you can uh, simply click this zoom to fit button and it's going to fit all of the geometry that you have created onto the screen, right? Right now we don't have any, so this will not, well, okay, it fits the grid, right? And then you have some additional settings right here that you can um, go, go for and enable, disable uh, different previews of the geometry. I will not get into those um, too much because that's, that's pretty straightforward. Also here in the top right corner, you have the little gear icon where you can um, turn off or on or off different panels. Right now, it's still not, not, not kind of finalized. So no need to, uh, to check that one out just yet. Okay, on to the interesting bit, the actual notes. Right, so here, don't press the home button, by the way. If you press the home button, it moves you out of the editor. But here you have the standard kind of grasshopper-esque uh, drop-down list of different, um, uh, different nodes that you are different functions that you can use, right? So you have the typical math operations, you have the list, uh, for, for now, it's it's mostly the list operations. As you can see, the data tree manipulation is pretty sparse. Uh, you have tools, a lot of them, right? So most of these have been, like they, they work exactly the same way as what you would expect in Grasshopper, which is very nice. Um, so the learning curve is not, not that steep. Then materials, you know, just to add some textures in there and inputs. So you have a constant number input or you can also have like sliders, text, curves and whatnot. So let, let's begin. Let, let's just start. Uh, if I just double click anywhere on the canvas, I can just write uh, a command that I want, right? So for instance, construct point. Remember, good old grasshopper times? <laughs> construct point. Right, so this initially works exactly the same way as what you have in any node editor. You create numbers for X, Y, and Z, and you get a point, right? Since the values by default are 0, 0, 0, the point is, of course, at 0, 0, 0, if I, I can't zoom in, right? Yeah, never mind. Okay. Um, then there are these three dots right here. If I click on them, I can hide my point, right? So this is how you hide and show the nodes. And I can learn more about, you know, what kind of inputs does it want? Uh, what's the description of the inputs and so on, right? So all of the explanation of what it's expecting from you are, um, are right here. Sorry, are right here. And then you have uh, different ways of how you can match the list. For now, we don't. Nah. We, we will not be using those. Those This, this is a uh, beginner level, <laughs> level tutorial, right? To just kind of get into it. Okay, so let's take this point and let's move it up, right? So I'm just going to create a move node. By the way, all of these tools are here in the top, right? So you could fish them out from there. But since all of the all of them have um, just icons and not, you know, if I, okay, never mind. If I hover over them, they do say the names. But this for me would just take too long. I know that I want to move the point, so I just create a move node, right? And connect point to geometry input like that. And for vector, I will use vector z. You can see when I type in vector spacebar z, it doesn't work. So I need to actually type in vector z without the spacebar and then it, it fishes it out. It's an early stage of development still. Beta version, right? Not alpha anymore, but still in beta. Okay, so now you can see a vector has been created. And if I check with learn more, it says the default value is 10. Okay, so it's moving the point up by 10 units, right? Just like so. If you want to um, increase or decrease the, the, the size of the vector, all you need to do is just create, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, a slider, right? So 
Under input, you can choose this range input, or you can just type in range. That's how sliders are called in the software. And stuff that I really love is if you expand this, um, then you can ac access the, the sliders options without, you know, right clicking, blah, blah, blah. So let's say our minimum range is 10, our maximum range is 20, and or, or um, let's say we're in millimeters, right? So yeah, let's go for 10, 20, or, or 30, something like that, and step size 0 0.1, great. Factor, and now as I increase the slider, you can see the viewport updates. Unfortunately, it does update only when you release the mouse, but it's, it's one of the limitations of a browser, browser-based node editor, I guess. Hmm, shouldn't be. Well, it is what it is. Okay, so we have one, right? I will create one more point from this, or maybe two more, uh, two more points. Um, so I'll just type in move again and just copy paste control c control v see that that works as well copy pasting and i'll just connect my point node to three move inputs that also works and just use different z vectors for those right so vector z copy connect that and connect that there we go and for the range input i will also copy the range and connect those like so so what i'm doing now is creating center points for future rings that we will use to create this kind of a tra trash bin um, that that will we're modeling right so the second uh, input should be larger let's go for 30 and the last input should be even larger maybe it goes up until 100 and it's like 60 something like that oops not not minimum sorry minimum can be zero or minimum should be like 30 um, but it goes up until 100 so let's go for 81 there we go zoom out so those are the positions of our four rings right the start second third fourth so now it's time to actually create those those circles right so i'll just double click and type in circle and there are of course different ways of how you can create a circle the simplest one is just called circle bam asks us for origin and radius so my initial point is the origin and for the radius i can use a range but in this case uh, perhaps we can just deal with a static number. Um, well, actually, no, never mind. Sorry. Uh, let's use actually a range. Range input. It's a number. There we go. It can't be zero, so it's freaking out. So instead, let's just expand this. Say that the maximum is 100. Minimum is at least one and just kind of move it to 60 well 60 is way too much move it to like 40 something like that should should be good to go right so we've created one circle let me just quickly copy and paste this one we'll talk about grouping in just a just a second you can see without <clears throat> without data trees it's a little bit i'm, I'm scared of 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 kind of do, doing some tricks with data management uh, or data flow management for that. Um, but in, in, in regards to the development of this uh, of the software, uh, they're quite fast. So I, I assume data tree management will come in quite soon. Maybe it has even come out uh, you know, after you've watched this video or during you watching this video. Okay, so in regards to, to the circles, those, those are done and I technically could immediately just loft it and I can show you how that would work. 
let's create a loft surface node loft surface and it has only two inputs how do you add more well you click on curve 2 and you add port so now you have three inputs and you have four you can also um, do holding the shift key i believe you can add more than one input to just curve one and that that would work as well but i personally prefer um especially if, if it's not like 50 different curves i prefer to use this this method it's just a little bit cleaner okay something like that right so with this done, we can move back here and start messing things up. So if this is bigger, <laughs> then we have this kind of shape. If the second curve is also bigger, then it's like that. And so on, right? Let's mess that one up. Nope. Oh, that, that's the base one. Okay, so the base one stays. Uh, maybe the top one becomes thinner. That's thinner. Okay, something like that. Here it'd be good to go. Okay, so we have ourselves a loft, but it's it's a pretty boring loft. And uh, just in, in regards to making this nicer, uh, we could create more var variation uh, on the surface. And we can achieve that by creating random fluctuations in the, in the points, right? So let's let's think how, how we can do this. If I were to just uh, take the bottom curve, let's say, uh, not the bottom one, but sorry, the second curve, the second circle. If I take that, let's delete the loft surface for now. If I take that and I use divide curve component, Divide by count, right? Divide by count and connect curve to the curve input. I'm using the second curve. You can see that it gives me one, two, three, four points. And that is because I assume the count is four. Cool. Well, it actually then gives me five points because start and end is duplicate. Um, so here for the count, I can choose any number that I want. And I'll just use a constant number. Constant. Really? Doesn't give me? Okay. Number const. Okay. So I, I, I should have type, typed in number instead of constant. And I can connect it here and type in, let's say, uh, 25 or 50. Uh, let's go for 20 for now. Um, 25. Okay, so with these points here uh, done or created, I can move them away, um, I either forward, closer, or away from um, the center point of the circle, right? So these points will need to be moved, move according to some sort of a vector. How do we get a vector that is between um, this point in yellow, between this point and the points that we have just divided up, right? These guys. So how do we make those, those vectors? Well, we just use vector uh, two points, uh, two point vector. Okay, fine. We go to tool, mm, vectors, there we go, expand that. And then here we just fish out a vector that clearly has an icon that says vector between two points. Oh my God. Okay, so this is where, where it gets tricky um, and, and, and by tricky I mean wh where you kind of need to get in the mileage into the software to actually be able to go fast 
um, because one if if you still don't know all of the icons, there it is. There it is. If you don't know all the icons by heart and their positions, it takes too long. Vector by two P, P and T. Okay, I I just want to see vector by. Okay, vector by two P and T. So point one is going to be our center point for our second circle, right? So not this one, but rather this, this point right here. That connects to point one and point two, and I'm just going to drag it all the way here. Point two is going to be all of these points um, that we got by dividing the, the point count like that. And thus, we get all of these vectors, right? And the position of the vectors does not really matter um, because they, they're just direction, right? But what matters is their length because right now, if I just connect vector to here, you can see that it does move them away, but it moves all of them away, first of all, uniformly, right? Because the distances are all the same. Second of all, it moves them away um, too much right so so the, the the size is too much so what we will use is uh, the node that we will use is called amplitude amplitude vector there we go so our vector between two points connects to the ve vector input and in terms of the length we can choose whichever length we want right and let's connect it there so in terms of the length uh, I want it to be randomized. I want it to be a random number for each vector, right? So it needs to kind of fluctuate. So we will create a random numbers list like that. Uh, for the list length, we go here. And then we have our little start and our little end and also our little count. So let's start with the count uh, of how many uh, how many random numbers do we need for the amplitude right well that's as many as the vectors we have uh, to get the answer to how many vectors we actually have we can either look into here into this number or we can be lazy and just say um, count or list length yeah list length list length like that Connect vector to the list input right here, and then it spits out a result for us. By the way, if you want to check the result, you can. Uh, if it's only one thing, you can check with value 25, perfect. So we know, you know, uh, how many vectors we have. Uh, as long as it's one value, you can just click on it and you can check it here. Um, if there's more than one value, for instance, all of these points, and if you want to check the coordinates of these points, then you can go to core and choose debug panel, uh, like that. Connect points to the OBJ, expand that. And here you have all 25 points with all of their coordinates. So that's useful. That's that's quite quite useful. But in this case, we don't need it. Okay. So length connects to count, and now it's definitely generating 25 different uh, random numbers that start uh, that with the minimum set to zero, and the maximum set to 10. So I want to fix that. Uh, I will just say negative. There's no negative. Okay. There should be. Math, operations. Uh, am I missing something? Anyway, if there is no negative, that's fine. Uh, because all we need to do is just say, okay, if we have a constant number that is 10, and I want my start to be, can my start be minus 10? Can I here type in minus 10? I definitely can. Okay, so that, that's solved. I don't need to multiply. 
or I could just take this 10 and uh, then multiply it by minus 1. That would work as well. Uh, multiplication. Like that. Boop, boop. And then here I have, you know, 10 multiplied by minus 1. Um, so the smallest value from the random numbers list can be minus 10. But the largest value from random numbers list is plus 10. Right? So minus 10 plus 10. So it fluctuates back and forth. Okay, now this is getting a little bit too crowded with the clean points and the moved points all up in the same space. So I'm going to hide the divide by count. I'm, I'm hiding that. And I only have the moved ones. Now for the moved ones, I will create a... a, a what do we create? We should create... One second, um, um, that is thinking. Interpolate, probably. Interpolate curve, yeah. Interpolate curve node. Connect geometry to point one. Bam. Right? Just interpolates through the list of points, gives us, spits out this nice little curve here. It's not closed though. How do you close it? Well, that's the Boolean here. Right? Uh, again, if you go to these three dots and you choose to learn more, you can see that is it closed, is a boolean, closed or open, and by default it's set to false, meaning that by default it's open. So I can just create a boolean node. Uh, again, boolean node. There we go. Bam. Now it's true, now it's closed. Perfect. Okay. That's what we want to see. Then with this done, we can uh, introduce a little bit more bizarre. Uh, first of all, let's hide the original curve as well as the points. Or oh, maybe the points should stay, but the original curve should, uh, should be hidden. So original circle, hide. And also I'm going to hide the vectors wherever they are. Are these the guys? No. Are the yeah, these, 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 these. There we go. <clears throat> so with this random uh, fluctuation, um, I want to inc increase the randomness even further by taking this curve, moving it up. So let's just do move again. Uh, vector z move it up and by factor of 10 or let's do 11 because that will give me number constant constant number okay so we have it moved up and i also can rotate it um just rotate it this geometry Angle is always in radians, we're not nerds, we convert degrees, like human speech, to radians, so degrees to radians. And we just type in, let's say, 15 degrees, like that. So the curve gets moved up and also it gets rotated 15 degrees. Let's hide a few nodes, uh, that, and that does not need to be hidden. Okay. Something like so. And you can see that the third uh, circle right here, that's a little bit too high. So I'm just going to increase its uh, range to like 50 and actually pull it almost, or maybe even more, like 70. And pull it almost all the way up there. There we go. So, we now have successfully created two kind of wavy uh, curves, right? And those wavy curves will be uh, very important in, uh, really quickly. Before we move forward, I want to increase the amount of points. So instead of 25 points that we have, I will just make 50. 
and I will decrease the amplitude of how much this is shaking, <laughs> you know. Uh, so I'm just going to say five, something like that. Maybe even less. Let's go for four. Eh, we'll see. Maybe five is fine. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Okay. So we have this, um, the, these curves already done. I, I think this is the time when we can actually start lofting things. So let's create a loft surface. Loft surface, degree goes, uh, well, degrees later, uh, curve first. So the first curve, let's go all the way back with our little loft surface node. The first curve is, of course, the circle that is on the ground. Easy. The second curve is going to be our wavy boy that we have created. Let's just keep dragging things around. That we have created right here. That's our second one. Okay. Third one. I do need to create a, a new port. Third one is the moved and rotated one. Like that. And we'll talk about why we're getting uh, why it's not perfectly kind of curving 15 degrees, but rather doing some 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 weird stuff. In some cases it's curving, in other cases it's just kind of folding back. Um, I think that has benefits and drawbacks, but that's that's later later later. Okay, uh, then our two more calm uh, circles. So let's move all the way back in here. This circle connects to, oh yeah, we need one more input for loft surface. That's curve four. And one more at port curve five is going to be our final circle. And you can see here um, that it's giving us a, some sort of, a sp it's spitting out an error, right? It's freaking out. Usually when this happens, it's just lost some sort of a, information point, data point, or if the viewport messes up, uh, you also should do this. You just press F5, so you re restart your browser, right? So you just refresh the page and it recalculates the whole thing and it's not lofting. Hmm. So that was strange. Well, but I did fix it by just simply taking all of the inputs uh, or output, sorry, all of the curves and putting them into one input of curve one, just connecting them there uh, without actually kind of dealing with uh, curve one, two, three, like different um, ports, right? And that seems to have solved the problem. So let me just delete that and let's just take a look at this. There we go. We have ourselves a, a little pumpkin. Okay, so now let's start talking all of the different things about B graphy and all of the other things. So first of all, the business model, the price, right? It's free. It's free. The way they earn money or the way they are planning on earning money is through creating an ecosystem in which you can make these things, right? You can sell these things and then you know, they, they get like, I, I don't know, 10%, 15%, 20%, what, whatever they decide on from every purchase, right? So that, that's, that's the business plan, which makes the product itself free to use. I think that's a very smart way to do it. And uh, it increases accessibility to everyone, right? So that's, that's very good. In terms of, uh, for instance, 3D printing, this, this type of a model, Let's actually do that. So I'm, I'm going to, or actually, uh, yeah, let, let, let's just do it. I'm going to take uh, this, this surface and I'm going to cap it because if you print something of, you know, this uh, style, uh, then, then you usually use base mode, right? So spiralized contours. So you need to cap it, bam, easy peasy, that's capped. And let's hide the original. There we go. And then for the capped surface or for the capped volume, 
uh, you will want to export it. And before we do, let me just talk about materials real quick. So under material, under texture, you can apply material. There we go. Um, there is the geometry. And let me hide this. Then for the color, uh, you can just type in, come on, type in color, color picker. And with the pipette tool, you can, you know, pick a color from, from anywhere on your screen, or you can just choose a color here. And I'm going to choose some beautiful green color. Wonderful. Very soothing and calm. Okay, then in terms of texture and metallicity, so texture you can import from your computer, met how metallic it is. Uh, that's going to be a range between zero and one. So I can just create a range input. You, you might be asking why is this important? Uh, you'll get to see it in just a second. Range input, and I'm just going to say, well, Maximum is one, step size is 0 0.1, and we just, whoop, 0 0.5. And it's not doing much. And the reason why it's not doing much because is because there's a second input here that's called roughness. So I can just copy paste the range input here and connect it to roughness. And as I'm decreasing the roughness to, let's say 0 0.1, now this bad boy is really metallic, which, enables me to talk about, let's go for something like this, which enables me to talk about um, the tessellation, right? And how does this work? Remember where, when we took the curves and we rotated the curves and we lofted the curves? So usually what would happen is the control points would be followed as the loft happens, but in this case, it's just jumping around all the time. And that is because the triangulation, the, the way this is made, uh, in between um, these two curves, this one and this one, there we go. In between these uh, these two yellow curves, the way it's made, it's basically making triangles that uh, connect the closest two points. That's at least my my, my assumption, right? So so it's kind of Delonoi three D tessellation type of a triangulation type of a thing, which is fine. Uh, which is fine. It gives it its own flavor, which I really don't hate. I, I think that's that that looks nice. Okay, so after the material has been applied, uh, you can start uh, exporting it. And there are two ways to export it. You either export the 3D model onto your, into your machine, onto your computer, and then slice it up, or you can uh, publish it onto BGraphy. And let's do both, of course. So what kind of format? To choose a format for which, which is going to be exported, you can go to Core, Expand Exporter, or you don't even need to expand, and here you have one, two, three, four, four formats that you can choose from. STL, STP, OBJ, DXF. STP, I believe, step is the NURBS uh, geometry exporter, while OBJ, DXF, and STL are, are all mesh. In our case, we are going to be using a mesh uh, for 3D printing, so I'm going to choose OBJ. OBJ, and drag it in here. And all you need to do is just connect it like that. Easy. Now you have that functionality of exporting as OBJ. How to get the file? You go to your file name, you choose to export. Now OBJ is here, you choose polygon density, or you can just type in the custom commands, you click on download. You wait, it downloads, there you go, there's your OBJ. Then you open up your uh, whatever slicer you're using for your 3D printer. I'm using Prusa slicer because it's good. I used to use Cura, but now Pr Prusa is just better, I think. And once the slicer has opened up, uh, you can actually just drag and drop. I'm on my second screen, don't you worry. 
but you can just drag and drop here and ta-da there's there's your there's your file it does have problems uh, that need to be fixed before you uh, start slicing it and the problem is called uh, naked edges so the cap when it's made uh, when it's added for the top and the bottom it does not really it, it duplicates the the vertices meaning that the geometry technically the geometry that's exported is open uh, but fixing this in at least in Prusa slicer is so easy you just click on this little um, icon that you didn't see it was basically here a little kind of fix me icon I just clicked it and it just fixes it immediately then I can slice it up let's give it a second while it's doing that let me move myself up and here it gives me a oh yeah okay so here it gives me a solid solid piece to actually get a spiralized contour we do need to go to not printer settings to print settings and here under spiral ways we vase we need to tick mark it it's gonna see that there's a, a bunch of settings that is gonna change we agree we go to platter we slice it up again and now now it's a vase Wonderful. In terms of the quality, let me show it to you. All right. Here it is. Three hours or three and a half hours later, I have myself a little bucket. Um, honestly, not too bad. I mean, I just used the free browser uh, software free software that runs on a browser to create some sort of a dynamic model right of a of a trash bin or a vase or, or whatever or a fancy hat right so I'm, I'm pretty happy with this and i think uh, at this point at this stage um b graphy uh, is is definitely a usable usable tool that that you should check out Last thing, uh, the publishing uh, of this whole thing. So if I go back now to home, right here, I have already published some things, but let's say for YouTube, right? The, the, this is the one that we've just made. Let me click these three little dots here and click on publish. Here I am able to write you know the title category and uh, there are a bunch of different categories for this and i can choose what kind of license uh, this model has and is it free or is it paid right so if it's paid then how much do i charge for static models how much do i charge for people to download the parametric version of the model right um I already have prepared one for me to show you. So under published little trash bin that that was my test for for this um, tutorial and the test looks like this. Right, it's mostly the same uh, same stuff that I've showed you, except that the sliders now have names and the way you change the name is you, you just double click the slider and it changes. You can change the name to whatever you want. And if I go back to not workspace, so I click on exit editor, but rather if I just go to my profile here, I can see that there is this little trash bin uh, free model. I made it free uh, that anyone can access and investigate or download. And it's not just downloading, it's also you can change the radii inside of the product page right so you can change ra radius one there we go updated you can change radius four i, I gave it really bad names <laughs> i should have I shouldn't have done that basically you can make your own custom little vase then just click on download as obj and 3d print it and you can make it like one dollar and every time a person kind of downloads it you get one dollar i think that's that's awesome awesome sauce all right last thing i promise but a very interesting thing 
Uh, for this, I will need to do a little bit of a setup, so just give me a second. Let me just jump in here and just say that one more functionality that some of you might find interesting is a possibility to embed into websites, so embedding your, your files into websites. And let me show you how that works really quickly. So if you go to your models tab, right, and you just select embed for, for any of these models, like so, you'll be presented with this embed code, which you can just simply copy and paste it onto any website. So uh, let me actually give you a, an idea. I copied it, by the way. So let's just create a quick little HTML, uh, HTML, and HTML website. And I guess it needs a body. And body end. And basically, this is bare bones, right? So I just copy and paste it in. I haven't tested this out, so this might not work. And let me just save this notepad file to my desktop as a test. Um, and actually, test.html or htm. Uh, let me go for html. Save that. And then if I go to my desktop, like that, uh, where is it? There it is, I double click it, it opens up in the browser, so I have successfully created a website. <laughs> um, and I guess, yeah, the, the, the colors here, since they don't match, there's there's a little bit of, of cleanup to do, but we can see the, the model that Aya has uh, messed up for me, working pretty well in my own little website that I've made. And in terms of, I guess we can do it this way, 333 three, three. okay so if i just take this hex code and we go for body uh, i guess it's color right or bg color probably bg color and that if i remember correctly goes in brackets something like that save uh, it's been so long nope uh, that's gonna be bg save again five oh there we go Okay, so, <laughs> damn it, <laughs> well, well, I tried, <laughs> I tried. So embedding is still, still young, but it does work. And this is a way of how you can push your products onto your own portfolios, onto your own websites. This is definitely a welcome addition to um, the set of features that Bgraphy already offers. So let's go back to the video. So collaboration. Collaboration with Bgraphy is actually quite, quite well done. And I, I'm really, really impressed by it. So what you can do is you can go to your um, model, um, just the model page, click on these three dots and choose to share, right? And as you share it, uh, you, you can type in an email. That's, that's uh, for, for, for my company. <laughs> um, and you can just invite them as a viewer, editor, configurator, or inspector, right? So let's say I, I add Aya as an editor. I click on invite, and now she has received an email that she's going to test, uh, test open. And by doing so, she will have access to my, um, to my model. Let's just uh, wait a second until she does that, and then I will show you the nicest thing about collaboration here. Okay, there we go. So now she's in here. That is not my mouse, that is Aya's mouse. And she's able to um, change the, the parametric model as, as she pleases, which I, I feel is, is awesome uh, and an awesome way to collaborate. So she's just kind of going through all of the different uh, different settings, and yeah, completely destroying my my model. <laughs> okay, please stop, stop. Okay, so th I guess that this is a um, good good way to show to you that sometimes you want it, people that you share the model to be just a viewer, and sometimes an editor, and 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 so on. In this case, should have been an editor, or should have been a viewer. Anyhow, 
So th this this kind of a collaboration, I think, is is really good and really fine, especially when you're dealing with large large scale models, right? I encourage you to check out Bigraphy. They did indeed sponsor this uh, video, but my, as I mentioned before, um, my involvement with them was, you know, it's almost two years now. So I'm uh, very, very curious to see where this product is going to head and where this product is going to go. That's it. That's it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.